Thank you, Chef Yu. Yes, you can really, you know, very wonder after uh, since the inception of the administration and this uh, second term. And uh, part of your policies or policy actions, of course, to stimulate uh, for, to stimulate action towards promoting civic and political, social and economic participation of women. Uh, again, you're also uh, putting as a cabinet priority uh, the issue of coordinating and monitoring women programs, providing them with technical support. Uh, let's look at you know, how far you were able to realize this objective in the last one year. Uh, let me get your take on that. Thank you very much. I'm sure you'll agree with me that women are the first teachers, women are the hearts of the home, and any development plan that doesn't involve women or doesn't put women at the center of it is bound to fail. We are having problems in this country because the huge population, the huge segment of the population is being neglected. But thanks be to our dear president, Muhammad Buhari, under his urban leadership, he has come in and he has shown a lot of commitment and passion to see that he makes a difference in the situations that concerns women. Women, until women's issues are properly addressed, the development of this country will continue to remain lopsided. The scale cannot be balanced as long as the greater percentage of the population is not involved in national issues. And that's women. You will agree with me that more than 52% of the population are women. And neglecting that is neglecting the highest population and that means underdevelopment. Let's, let's start from you know, the administration itself. Um, yes, just like the Ugandan put, the president is uh, very much concerned about the development of women as a critical sector of society. Um, there has been this uh, agitation for women representation in politics. Uh, this is much talk about the 35% affirmative action. But the administration of President Muhammad Buhari is yet to put 70% The journey of a million miles starts with a step. We appreciate um, what he has done so far and we are very hopeful and very positive that more are coming. We will not rest on our house until more women take their rightful place. And I know that Mr. President will fulfill that mandate. I'm particularly happy with the key positions he has given women. At least the key ministry, like the Ministry of uh, Finance, he has the confidence of a woman who is making us proud, uh, Aja Zainab Jamsuna. She's been on. This is her second tenor with him. That confirms the fact that women never fail particularly when it concerns securing the treasury of the nation. We also have a woman as the head of Paris, and then six of us in other portfolios. They are all very strategic. The Ministry of Humanitarian is very, very uh, strategic. Trade and investment, uh, environment, FCT, and the Minister of State transport. All this we appreciate, but we are still asking for more. Okay, uh, looking at the challenges you know, facing women, especially the contemporary ones, uh, you've been involved in women activism and uh, you know, championing the cause of women you know, almost all uh, across your political journey, so to speak. Mm. And uh, the recent one has to do with this spike you know, in rape cases in Nigeria. Gender 
based violence generally. Now, the lockdown you know, has presented a lot of challenges to women. Uh, I know your ministry has been in the forefront of uh, you know, advocacy, advocacy and of course ensuring that uh, uh, the spike has reduced. Um, how are you consolidating on this, especially you know, engaging critical stakeholders to ensure that women, uh, uh, the, the woman dignity is actually safeguarded? Thank you very much. This is an issue that makes my heart beat. Gender-based violence and rape has been there. It is as old as history. But the number has increased tremendously, about three, four times what we used to know due to the lockdown of COVID-19. And even with the lockdown, the cases we are hearing that everybody is crying and saying, oh, there's a high spike, it's even nothing compared to the real issues on ground. Because I'm in touch with my commissioners at the state level and local government level, social welfare officers, the report we are getting from the states, it has, is heartbreaking. And I want to state categorically clear that gender-based violence is not just a, an issue for the Ministry of Women Affairs. It is a social problem which has to be dealt with holistically. You and me, every well-meaning in Nigeria, must contribute their quota, must be concerned, and must show some commitment to ending this gender-based violence. Rapists are not strangers. Rapists mostly are people that are very familiar to the family, sometimes even uncles, sometimes even fathers, cooks, drivers, neighbors, uncles, sadly. And so we need all well-meaning Nigerians, we need the community to embrace this campaign and own it. The community should condemn it. The community should be the eye that once a rapist is identified, he should be dealt with. Because government alone cannot handle this. Mr. President has shown tremendous political commitment. For the first time in the history,
insurgency and there is a, a number of women are facing the difficulties that the IDP comes. Um, how are you looking at this challenge and what intervention are you providing in this respect? We are doing a lot. I'm sure if you recall, I've visited uh, the IDB camps a number of times. I saw their health condition. I was so moved. I ran to the Minister of Health and we organized uh, a health outreach. And we continue to do more to support. I want to commend the Governor of Borno State for the job well done. He's doing very well, despite the huge number of IDP camps which is mostly uh, women and children because in every crisis situation, in every war situation or any situation that disrupts the family Yes, she's doing her best to reach out to them. I want to call on all women in Nigeria. The situation in the IDP camps needs all and all attention. Because what I discovered in my interaction with most of them, even there in Borno and here in Abuja or any IDP camp, Nakarawa, I did get one IDP camp up here. And Mostly it is security. Our security men should have the fear of God because most of the pregnancy in the IDP camps, if you will discover they are raped, they are molested just because they are hungry. So government is doing its best, but government cannot solve all the problems. That's why I commend civil society organizations and NGOs that have reached in reaching out to support them. Because a hungry man is an angry man is, and is vulnerable to any situation. And people should not take advantage of such people. We must be our brother's keeper. We must have, to do the, the, have the fear of God. If we are assigned to go and protect these people, we should genuinely protect them. Uh, you know, it comes to that is also the issue of resettlement because in most cases you find out that you know people in the, the ID, IDP camps wants to return to their homes, but the, the resettlement process is also slow. Uh, and when they are resettled, there is also need to empower them so that they can they can build a new life or they can you know continue with their children, the body. Most of them are find you know you realize that they are. They are out to give them soccer and whatever but uh, government is doing a lot to ensure these people are resettled the Bordeaux state government is doing quite a lot and I don't have the actual figures but we've been seeing most of them being resettled but resettlement can only be done when they ensure the place is properly secure so you don't rush into resettling them where they when the place is not fully secure but um, government at the national level and Borno State government has done quite a lot and we hope to see more. Okay. In case you're just joining us, the program is Kisses of the Week. And our guest this week is uh, the other woman is a woman of Paris, and then Paul and Carly. Uh, together we'll be looking at her work here at the uh, as a minister in this ministry and uh, the interventions the ministry has been providing in the area of uh, ensuring the welfare of women and of course protecting them uh, from uh, the ills uh, of the society. We will take a short break. When we return, we will continue with the discussion. Uh, there are a number of issues ranging from you know, the need to uh, safeguard and secure women uh, from uh, with trafficking of, uh, in person, a number of issues around the, the, the 
which I uh, have, or the regions I uh, should be uh, protected. We'll be talking about all of that when we return from the break. Uh, stay with us. Today we have our, our guest, Honorable uh, Minister of Women Affairs, uh, talking about uh, Nepal and Thailand. And uh, together we'll be looking at her stewardship in the last one year and the interventions by her ministry. Uh, before that, we we'll break, we're extensively talking about you know, the challenges facing women, especially uh, the violence against women, uh, despite in rape cases and how the ministry is intervening. And uh, now, uh, we we'll discuss a little about and I understand one of your critical areas of uh, concern is the issue of girl child education, which is also key, you know, to the survival of women and their uh, well-being. Now, um, it has been a very long subject, you know, looking at the history of Nigeria. Women have been uh, at, the, uh, at the disadvantaged position when we talk about education. Uh, the, the challenge is even more pronounced in northern parts of the country. Where women are uh, taken out of marriage you know, at the early stage and all of that. It's a critical challenge. How are you delivering on this? Or how are you realizing this objective or getting the girl child to be educated? This again is just like the case of the gender-based violence that I said. It has to look at you have to look at it holistically. Yes, the girl child education is top on my agenda because the education of the girl child is the greatest investment you can give a child. It is the weapon that will carry her through life. And there's this saying that educating the woman is educating the nation. Because when you educate a woman, it has a multiplier effect. The woman is not just educated for herself, but she will help ensure that her children are educated, her neighbors, everybody within the household is educated and therefore it has a multiplier effect. An educated mother would be a better mother. As term, uh, in terms of the nutrition of food in the house, the health issues affecting the woman, uh, so many things. The economic management of the, the resources is uh, an educated wife. So the only way to empower a woman, the greatest empowerment is education. Once a woman is educated, she can take care of herself in times of uh, when she loses her husband. If she is an educated woman, she has a job, she can fall back to, she can be able to run and take care of her family. But even if it is business she is doing, if she's doing she can manage it well because of the education. And that's why Mr. President under his able leadership is also fully, fully, he's a driver on the seat and he has made several pronouncements that every Nigerian child is the right of every Nigerian child to be educated. The education of every child is key to this ministry because the women and children are under us. And once we address this, the education of the girl child solves many other problems, the health, economic, whatever. But are you also worried about the intervention coming from the states, the subnational levels, uh, based with low level of uh, funding for education? But
and not just walking alone. The ministry of women affairs is not a standalone ministry in every aspect. In the area of the girl child, we are working hand in hand with the Ministry of Education. And I want to commend the Ministry of Education under, under the ever leadership of uh, Malema Ademu Ade and his Minister of State, uh, Honorable Emeka Wajibu. They are doing very well and we are working together. Even the last council on education, we went to Potako together and Funny enough, almost all the members of so the uh, adult literacy education. We are not just about the girl child, but adult literacy education is very, very key to us because there are so many.
but that doesn't mean that we are saying that it's a license for they should be allowed to go further at least complete the first uh, university education it is key because that is the only way we can empower our children is the best investment that no one can steal from them is the best investment that you can give a child as a parting gift in marriage education okay but of course, uh, as we round up uh, let me get your take or your um, what you intend to achieve in the next uh, the, the remaining three years of this administration what legacies would you want to leave uh, as the minister of women in nigeria thank you very much first is to scale up the number of our children's enrollment in primary and secondary schools uh, we intend to achieve that jointly with the Ministry of Education we will intensify advocacy we will go to whatever level I'm also launching the payback uh, uh, is a strategy appealing to well-meaning Nigerians educated philanthropic organizations to look around within your community identify two or three girls or even two or three boys Keep, look at the poorest of the poor in your community adopt the children there take responsibility of supporting their education for the girl child you may be surprised that so many poor families so many girls in our rural areas don't have the opportunity to be in school for a whole month at least every month they are absent from school for one week why because they don't have they can't afford to buy the sanitary towels to keep themselves clean this is sad and heartbreaking uh, we are doing our best to reach out to some schools to support the teenage uh, students with sanitary pads but we need more of this Potter and Gamble is an organization that has been very supportive to the ministry I want to actually express my appreciation to them and I'm calling on all well-meaning Nigerians support the education of your community of girls and boys from very poor areas uh, communities in your uh, adopt a school furnish a classroom government cannot do everything government is doing a lot Mr. President is committed to continuously improving the budget of the uh, Ministry of Education but the population is so huge and we, the number of children we produce are increasing day by day without the supportive infrastructures but we can do something to put smiles on the faces of uh, these unfortunate uh, children that come from these poor families we can do better by helping and supporting the education of these children so that we can have a better and healthier society the security the security problem we are facing now mostly is because of out of school children the advisory system is another issue that we must understand that the formal education is a necessity if we want to move this country forward if we love nigeria we must put education first in everything education of our children is the surest hope of a better tomorrow for our children thank you very much Honorable minister then the empowerment of women the political space must accommodate women in politics women empowerment is key we are working with various financial institutions just last week i've launched the women uh, development fund where i invited financial uh, institutions um, some embassies friends of uh, the ministry at, who are very committed to and we're doing this in uh, collaboration with nasima and sme dot uh, ng we are working with them to ensure that we have this women development trust fund where we will support the empowerment of women for a better and healthier society for all of us because if a woman is empowered it's the family that is empowered she will ensure her children are back to school she will ensure the children 
fit well and are fully equipped to be in school.